Sheikah technology in Breath of the Wild works in mysterious ways. Or so it seems. In one of my previous Breath of the Wild videos, I showed you how the Sheikah Slate reads and writes with water, which it turns out is only a catalyst for DNA. But there's still the mystery of how these runes work, so today I'm going to show you the science behind the rest of the Sheikah Slate. Did somebody say the science behind? I did, and hello my blue bulbous friend, why don't you introduce yourself? Oh, sure. Hello everyone, I'm Kaihatsu. I run a little series on my own channel called The Science Behind, where I usually cover one whole game in a video. I have a habit of showing up when people mention the series title. Well, seeing as you're here, do you think you could help me figure out how the Sheikah Slate works? Sure, why not? I believe that most of the Sheikah Slate's technology relies on nitrogen. Nitrogen? Why nitrogen? The reason I say nitrogen is because the Sheikah are a very natural and agriculturally proficient race, and nitrogen is used to fertilize soil and probably their crops. Also, nitrogen is one of the most abundant elements on Earth, and is present in protein and therefore DNA, which makes it a highly versatile substance, also being highly reactive in most cases, and therefore easy to augment and manipulate. Oh yeah, that also means that the Sheikah Slate using DNA as a method of storage is more viable if more of its functions are based on nitrogen too. But in terms of the runes, how is nitrogen involved with magnesis for example? Well, it is possible that magnesis works by cooling liquid nitrogen to extremely low temperatures. We're talking close to absolute zero, which is zero Kelvin, or minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. Of course, though that is extremely difficult to do, but you know, science injected with magic and all that. The liquid nitrogen would cool an alloy such as niobium titanium, or vanadium gallium, that's wrapped up as a coil to create a powerful electromagnet. Obviously, the trail shown in the game when magnesis is activated must merely be an illusion projected out like a hologram, as this kind of visible trail wouldn't actually be produced by any sort of magnet. Hmm, that seems feasible. What about Cryonis, though? Cryonis. Well, seeing as the Sheikah Slate could use liquid nitrogen for magnesis, it's possible that it also uses liquid nitrogen to create blocks of ice from water. The only problem with that is that the ice created by liquid nitrogen, when sitting in water, creates a thick, cold fog of condensed nitrogen gas that flows outwards over the water's surface. The Cryonis in Breath of the Wild lacks this fog. Well, we do see that the blocks of ice in the game do give off a little faint fog once created. Perhaps the game doesn't exaggerate this part of the dry ice. Or perhaps the game merely de-exaggerates this part of the dry ice. Or it's using a form of magic to help keep that pillar from melting, which also keeps the fog at bay. I suppose that is possible. Anyways, let's move on to something more interesting. The bombs. Any idea what they could be made out of? Plasma. That was quick. Seeing as everything else is already connected to nitrogen, what are the chances that the bombs are also related to nitrogen? Go on. At the moment, many plasma cutting torches use nitrogen gas, so having some unsteady nitrogen plasma stored in a compact space may be very possible. Remote triggering the bombs removes the outer shell, causing all of that pressurized hot plasma nitrogen to explode. But how come only a limited area around the bomb is affected by the bomb then? Well, that would simply be due to the amount of plasma used by the bombs. The Sheikah Slate would only be able to store so much at once. That's why the bombs have a recharge time, which flows into the point of how the slate stores all this nitrogen. It doesn't have to store very much at all because nitrogen is all around us in the air. Makes sense. And that only leaves us with one rune left then, stasis. Oh no, I've been dreading this rune the entire time because there is no known way to freeze an object in time. Well, there must be some way of explaining it, even if we have to stretch physics a bit. And even if we just say it has to have some sort of magic involved, there still has to be some level of science in there. After all, we've already solved the other ones. So, what about the quantum Zeno effect? Oh? Can you remind me what that is again? The quantum Zeno effect, it's kind of confusing since it's literally quantum mechanics. It's based on a philosophical idea devised by Greek philosopher Zeno of Elia. The idea is that something moving has to get halfway before it gets to its end point. And before that halfway, it has to get halfway to that halfway. And before that halfway, it has to get halfway to that halfway, which is half before the other halfway. So on and so forth, all the way to infinity. According to Zeno, this is an infinity of points to get past, and represents a paradox. The quantum Zeno effect is also an effect that was observed by George Sundershan and Bajanath Misra in the 1970s. Also, I probably pronounced those names wrong. They noticed that if you observe something, especially at the quantum level, then it doesn't appear to change. It is, in effect, frozen in that state. Hmm. The only thing with that, though, is that it only occurs at a very microscopic scale, 
and it doesn't really apply to big objects like Stasis does to objects in Breath of the Wild. Plus, it's chance-based. It's more of a thought experiment than an actual experimental phenomenon. What about time shift stones from Skyward Sword? Unrefined ones can create a small field around them. Unrefined time shift stones can be found within the minecarts in the Lanayru mining facility, which can be struck to activate a small field surrounding the cart, activating and mobilizing the cart in the process. But that's not exactly stasis either. Well, I'm starting to run out of ideas, Loxton. We could pore over scientific papers for years and still not find answers, because we're trying to solve something that modern science hasn't even cracked yet. Surely, though, there must be something else. Some theoretical science. Perhaps if we look at things on a microscopic scale like we did with the quantum Zeno effect... Wait, <laughs> that's it. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Maybe. Leptons. Leptons! Leptons seem to fit the role quite well for stasis. Indeed. Electromagnetism, gravity, and weak forces affect lepton particles, but not strong forces. While it's science fiction for now, stasis would convert the object into lepton particles, which don't experience hard forces, and gravity would keep the object in relative motion to the ground, keeping its relative motion at zero. Now, because it can't experience strong forces, it can't release the stored momentum until it's no longer under the effect of stasis. An object under the effect of stasis would have to be made of pure energy. Switching the leptons on and off could do that. So stasis freezes an object in space and not time. That way you can still store inertia on an object with stasis applied. The object would lose weight, but retain mass. But it would also have to be an immovable object, so it would have infinite mass for a finite time. An object having infinite mass would cause a black hole, so it would have to be temporarily converted to leptons in order for stasis to work. However, the object's velocity relative to Hyrule would have to become zero. The object in stasis would still have to have some motion to give it the illusion that it isn't, if that makes sense. It has to rotate with the planet. Don't forget that leptons can appear to be in more than one position in space. Superpositioning, that's it. Probability, a quantum field, because the starting location of the object, the trajectory, and final location is all probability, based on the forces acting on the object at a superposition state. The object will be in more place than once, so all in all, it gives us the effect of stasis. Well, after all that debating, it seems we figured out everything. How about a recap? Cryona seems to be liquid nitrogen, based on the way it manages to freeze so fast. The bombs seem to be made of nitrogen plasma, and the blast radius is controlled by the amount inside of the bomb, which explains the recharge time on the bombs. Magnesis is the result of an electromagnet made from a liquid nitrogen called alloy, and stasis is the result of a time stone within the slate that temporarily converts an object into leptons while it is in more than one position in space. And it does its computation through DNA storage within a water-like substance, and it pulls nitrogen from the air to power everything it does. So there you have it, the science of the Sheikah Slate. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you a whole bunch to the people over on my Discord channel, link in the description. They were the ones that originally came up with this idea, as well as helped us figure it all out. Also, you should check out Kaihatsu's channel, as he's covered more sciencey stuff over on his series, The Science Behind. I also cover a wide variety of other topics to do with gaming, such as culture and artistic influence in video games. You can click here to get to his channel, and there's also a link in the description. And until next time, never stop using your noggin.